Oh, I just had a fantastic steak dinner and I need some mead to finish off the meal. I think I got two just for the occasion. Today, I am showing you princess tree blossom meads. Now, this right here is a princess tree. If you wanted to know. Actually, just kidding, it's, it's not. I mean, it, it could be if you were in a video game, of course. Princess tree is actually a, a tree that has blossoms and said blossoms are actually highly um, nectarous or nectariferous as I saw somewhere here. Nectariferous. Essentially, bees pollinate on this. Um, it's from Asia, generally speaking. It has really interesting, fun characters that I like, and uh, I personally get some, a little bit of like a caramely note, butterscotchy kind of toastiness in there, so it's interesting. Um, it's not a bright floral, which is fun. Today I'm teaching you two recipes with this specific honey, and some of you are looking at me going, well, I don't even know where to get this freaking honey. Like, you're just, you're just making a recipe that I'm never gonna create. Okay, enjoy this stupid video. But, if you get a hold of some honey, which I will put a link in the description of where you can find this honey, you can try one of these. We've got a traditional mead, which is honey, water, yeast. Um, nutrients, of course, and we did oak it. And we have a methaglin. So we've got kind of a Christmassy spice. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through my reasoning for why I went ahead to, well, went ahead with a methaglin. I felt like it paired well. So let's talk recipes. So we have the traditional mead recipe right here, and we have the methaglin. Um, I will, of course, walk through the process if you'd like to know how to make this. Although, if you're watching this, you've probably made a mead before, so it's not too far off from what you normally do. You can see they both look beautiful and clear and freaking amazing. And I will um, talk about how I got to that point. So, both recipes there. Let's talk about process. I started with a big batch of must, basically mixed together about three gallons of princess tree honey, or sorry, <laughs> about three gallons of must from, I think it ended up being about 2.5 pounds per gallon of uh, honey. And then of course we used water. We are gonna use some Fermate O. We used a pretty interesting yeast for this one. I wanted to try something fun that would present um, more bright characters and maybe get some fun, interesting things. So I used Omega Sundew, which is generally a quitty, pr quitty, pretty quick fermenter, but also has some uh, nice characteristics that the yeast provide, which I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm just gonna give a, a bold statement and say, if you're watching this thinking that yeast don't provide different things, click off the video, please, they do. Or go, go watch a video. I've got a video on eight different yeasts. I'm about to have a video on 20 different yeasts for one recipe. Point is, it does matter. Started with that recipe, a, a big batch recipe I'll put on screen. Went ahead, mixed it up, pitched my yeast, starting gravity 1.090. Um, we went ahead, let that ferment. Of course, I kind of front loaded my nutrients. You can use a staggered nutrient schedule. You have a lot of options. I was kind of lazy. So after that, we went ahead and racked it into a new container, uh, roughly 20 to 30 days to ferment. It was a little bit longer fermentation than I thought. Uh, it was not clear at this point. Let it set for a little while longer. You'll notice that in this video I'm showing, there is a sudden change in how much mead is there. And it wasn't that I drank a bunch of uh, cloudy or yeasty mead. It was, I used part of that mead to fill up this right here. You see this uh, little barrel? That is a very fun, fun project I have. It's my 50K or 50,000 subscriber mead. We're not there yet, maybe. Um, but you can actually go down, there's a form, you can win this barrel. But anyways, we topped off this barrel with that mead. So that's why there's less. We had about two gallons left, roughly. So we racked into two one gallon carboys. At that point, um, we had, I, I kind of wanted to do something special. I like to try and make a traditional. I feel like it's just a good thing to do with the honey. It represents the honey well, lets me really dive deep with that. And I also wanted to do a different kind of recipe. So we decided on the methaglin. 
it, currently at this moment, it is uh, nearing Christmas and we are kind of in that mm, realm where a methaglin seems appropriate, it's gonna get cold. So I went ahead, I'm gonna talk about the methaglin first. I went ahead and basically just added a 16th of a teaspoon of cardamom, a 16th of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a whole clove, and um, a, about a half a cinnamon stick. So we get kind of a interesting spice character there. We let that set for uh, five days maybe. And then we racked off of those. We decided at that point, or I decided at that point, it was probably best if it was oaked. So we threw about, I think a half ounce of French oak chips on there for about five to six days. And then we pulled those off. So we have an oaked methaglin now. And uh, I had stabilized this a while before. However, I didn't end up back sweetening, so this one right here has stayed at 1.000 gravity. It still is there. We let it set, cleared up some, and we bottled it. The traditional mead, similar route, well, more simple route, I should say. We went ahead and, after racking it over, um, stabilized it, because I wanted it to be sweeter. So we stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. I don't mind using them, I think they're good. Then we went ahead and uh, back sweetened with about six ounces of the princess tree blossom honey that I had left over. So this one, the final gravity is 1.018, a little bit sweet. We oaked the brew with a, a half ounce of French oak chips as well for about four to five days, not too long. And um, then at that point I decided, all right, we're going to uh, let it sit for a while. And then we bottled it. So. There's that. These, these meads are about uh, five months old at this point. So all that progression I talked about, I'll put like a, a timeline for both of them because I just walked through that, but there was a lot of setting in between that. Anyways, let's taste them. Let's start with the traditional. I feel like it's only right to start with that. So here it is in my left hand. Yeah, we get a lot of oak, a lot of... Um, uh, Honestly, I think that sundew did bring out a little more brightness from this honey than there normally is. There is like a a rich note in there. I get a little bit of like a caramel. It's uh, super interesting. Here we go. Mmm, um, dark, almost like a like a hybrid between a dark cherry kind of cherry note and a, a caramel with some fantastic oak rounding out on top of sweetness. Mm. It's just very well melded and it is five months old. So there's a lot of um, roundness to this being 11.8 ish percent. You would think it'd have some heat. It doesn't have a lot of heat. It's pretty smooth. Honestly, super crushable. Um, looks great. If you have trouble clearing these things without time, you can generally just start to use some clarifiers, sparkaloid, I personally like Chitosan and Kisasol. Anything you can really find to help out in the clearing process, it will create a little more sediment, but it also will lead to a clear brew. Last but not least, the Methaglin. Similar process, not back sweetened. This one has some sweetness to it to help um, fill out that honey character. Oh yeah, the spices are super apparent on this. There's so much, um, I like that cardamom and uh, the clove. Little cinnamon rounding. It, sm it smells like Christmas, is what it smells like. It has some like almost apple y note. Here we go. Oh man, I feel like I'm drinking Christmas right now. Literally, it's just like spices and warming and not a lot of sweetness, but I, don't, I didn't want sweetness for this because I felt like it just was there. The honey character is still there, of course, and that oak is just like such a nice, warm blanket around everything. Oh, oh my gosh. I think, do I have an ad for this video? Uh, uh, future Garrett, roll the ad. Oh, and we're back. All right, so both of these brews are 
awesome. And I imagine that they're gonna age wonderfully. I got quite a few bottles, as you'll see on screen, um, so I'm, I have no shortage of mead for this one. My only regret with it is, um, I wish I had made more of it, quite frankly, because I think it's gonna age really well. Would I do something different with this honey? I think there's lots of pairings for it, but I personally don't really know what they would be. One great tool for your tool belt and your mead making career is the Flavor Bible, which I'll show a picture on screen and I'll put a link down, the, down below for an Amazon link. That thing's perfect for if you have a flavor you like, it has a bunch of combinations or options for you to be able to pair with that to go well. Super great tool for your, your tool belt. So simply enough, this mead, five months old, it's already pretty dang good. And it is balanced. Again, I talk about this a lot and I'm not gonna go deep with this, but what might separate you in your current mead making situation from others is your ability to balance a brew and make it more palatable. You might be great at making sweet meads but if that sweet mead doesn't have acid and tannin to balance it, game over, you're done. So I taste a lot of meads from people. I tasted for competitions and that's a, that's a big problem. So balance your brews. Uh, I hope you'll support the channel, of course, and uh, check out those links below. We got a Discord, you can join. Um, there's the Discord mead series. Currently at the moment of, uh, of recording, we are working on a raspberry cheesecake mead. That video will probably be out <laughs> before this one, so you can go find that. But you can also hop in and uh, lead the Discord challenge there. Um, I do give out money for those. You can also win the barrel. You can also get, man, I got lots of things. This is my little promo. You can also check out one of these great shirts. These are uh, Saving the Bees. You can find a link below. This shirt, uh, is all the proceeds go to support a bee uh, keeping charity that helps educate people on developing bees basically to keep the population alive. So you can find that below in a very fun video. So many links. I hope you've enjoyed it. But I'll see you next time. What am I going to finish with? It's Christmas. Cheers. Cheers.